welcome to the Understanding Projects podcast. My discussion today is with Fernando Santiago. Fernando has extensive experience in project, program, and portfolio management. I've known Fernando for many years and highly respect his knowledge of project management, but particularly in some of the technical areas such as earned value management. During our discussion, we talked about the extension of earned value management into the area of benefits management. This extension is a new indicator, the Realization Performance Indicator, or RPI, that behaves the same as SPI and CPI, but measures the current forecast of benefits against the forecast baseline. This indicator would certainly be of interest to senior managers of organizations wanting to maximize the benefits achieved from their project portfolios. Here is my discussion with Fernando Santiago. We've done some work in, in, I understand, Fernando, in uh, a topic called Realization Performance Indicator, or RPI. Mm-hmm. And But before we get into that, it, it's a good idea, I think, to just for, first do a, a quick recap of earned value management. Or that's the, yeah. the, you know, the determination of schedule performance indicator and cost performance indicator. So just wondering if you could just give like a sort of a quick summary of that, and then we'll go into the your work on RPI. Sure. Sure. Uh, so earned value is uh, is really a technique that has been around for 50 something years. And it started in aerospace and uh, uh, defense, so those kind of projects or programs that are billion dollar programs. So uh, 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 0.1% of, of barriers is a lot of money. Right? Mm-hmm. So, so they developed this type of approach uh, that is uh, what it does is that it combines scope, schedule, and cost at the same time. So basically what, what the value is, is uh, it creates a plan that is based on budgeted cost of the scope that you are expected to deliver. So in very simple terms, if uh, I'm going to build, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm building a high rise and uh, excavation and foundation is 20% of the of the budget and the budget is let's say 10 million dollars uh, well if I finish that you know I I can claim let's call it that way two million dollars because that was a budgeted value of uh, of, uh, of the foundation for so excavation and foundation so now the two things there are that's what I can claim and that's our value but there are two different things. You know, one is when was that supposed to be done? And we could say, well, that was supposed to be done at the end of month three. So then, and that was a plan. So then we compare that to what happened in reality. It was done at the end of month four. Okay, so it is behind schedule. So it can tell us very quickly if it's behind schedule and then how much money we spent doing that for the actual cost. We budgeted. Uh, two million dollars, but maybe we spent uh, one point eight million dollars. So, in, so in that example, and again we compare it to the plan. So, in that example, you could say, okay, so we plan for four months, for three months, and we use three, and we use four months. So there is a variance there. So uh, if we divide three by four, you know, it gives you 0.75. and that's what earn value calls. SPI is the scheduled performance indicator, which is a number. It's just a number, no units, a number that if it's one, it's right on track. If it is less than one, it's either behind schedule or over budget. And if it's more than one, happy face, it's under budget or ahead of schedule. So in this case, we got the 0.75, uh, so that's bad. So less than one is bad. Right. So, so it's bad that on schedule. Yeah. That it is, no, exactly. It is behind schedule. Right? Uh, so 0.75, you could say, okay, so it's like 25% behind schedule. Yeah, you could say that. So, and the, if we calculate, you know, the the cost performance indicator, we said 2 million. And let's say, just for, for argument's sake, that we spent, I said 1.8, but that's kind of like a, okay, so let's use 1.8. So if we divide 
the earn value, right? So, which is two, two million divided by 1.8. It's gonna give us a number, I don't know a number right now, but it's something like one point something, like 1.1 something probably. So that will be the cost performance we care, that's CPI. And in that case is above one. So it tells us, it tells us that it is under budget. So it's good. So, so, so those are the two, the two indicators of earned value. And, right. uh, and, and just to kind of finalize or wrap up, to wrap up this intro, earned value has nothing to do with value. You know, it should be called earned scope. Right. Because that's what it really is. It's scope at budgeted cost. Right. So, so what earned value has done really is turn everything into money. So everything is money. So then, so the plan is money, the actual cost is money. And so that way you can compare different right. things. So, but it has nothing to do with value. So okay. many people so, have this, yep, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I just, I was gonna oh, say, okay. I think you were going, I think you were just about to go there, but I was saying, okay, so what's what's the, pro that, that seems pretty good so far, like so far so good. Mm -hmm. So it tells us, it's this indicator if we're going to be early or late and this indicator that we're going to be over budget or under budget. So, so I guess, where's the issue with that? Like what, what drove the further work that you did on, okay. on this? Yeah, like, first of all, two things. The fact that it's color and value, it's a misnomer, has been used to discredit our value and say, our value is all about value, so throw it away. It doesn't work, doesn't, no, of course it works. It's just, it's a misnomer, but that's all it is. There are, there is an army of practitioners of their value. I've had, because of the work that I've done, I've been at their seminars. There's a, 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 an institute called CPM. Uh, uh, it's it's a College of Performance Management. Mm -hmm. And that's the, it's like the PMI of earned value. So it's the, it's the body that regulates the application of earned value. So they have two conferences a year and they're packed. So that tells you, you know, that earned value is still very much, you know, in use. And, and because in many industries, it is mandatory. If you want to work with the government, you know, in right. Canada and the state, you have to, you have to use earned value. So, uh, so now, why, why move into something else? Because that's precisely the area where I've been working, is the area of value, benefits management, value management. And now, if you look at the new PMBOK, right, PMBOK uh, 7, it's all about value. It's, uh, so now the conscience you know, of, of, uh, has kind of uh, concurred in, into, okay, value is what's mo most important. Right. But their value is not giving us that. Just, just to pause for a moment, it's sort of funny because you're, you're saying there's a lot of people that are objecting to the word value in, mm -hmm. in earned value. and, and and I kind of get where you're going. Like it's terms in terms of it's not necessarily the value to the business in the long run. It's the value of the work being performed. Like I think yeah. it's almost a a use of a double use of the word value. I think, but it's interesting to me that in an earlier and and you know correct me if I'm wrong on this, but there was a time when there wasn't the term earn value. Wasn't it something along the lines of budgeted cost of work performed? Or, yeah. And that yeah, those were the more accurate, you know, that was, yeah, that was yeah. more, more like it wasn't as kind of didn't roll off the tongue. That's probably one of the reasons why I'm, I'm sort of misremembering it, but it, but it was technically more accurate. Was it not? Yes. Uh, yeah, definitely that, that the acronym was more accurate, yeah. more explicit in terms of what it's right? yeah. budgeted cost or perform, but the technique was still called and so the, 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 the formulas, right? The right. formulas use those those terms. So right. budget across or actual cost of work performed, and uh, yeah. Uh, so so that's the only change that has happened in the last few years. They have uh, the use of the of, of the of the acronyms has uh, right. has been simplified. Have so been now simplified. it's EV for in value, AC for actual cost, and the PV for planned value. So right. those are the three. Those yeah. are the Easy three, to remember uh, on tests. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> So, so the thing with our value is that it's only concerned with delivery. So it's just project or program delivery. And when you 
talk about real value, you are talking about the other side of the equation. Right? Mm -hmm. When you deliver to the business, to the operation, to what is the value that is going to be generated. So, uh, so that's where we kind of, myself and there's a, another person I work with, uh, Crispin Piney, uh, he wrote a book on the topic. Uh, it's called Earn, 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 no, Earn, Manage, no, Earn Benefits Program Management. So it's just about that topic. Uh, and uh, it includes uh, that one indicator that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. So that's why I kind of thought, well, maybe there's something that we could do in terms of extending that framework of SPI, CPI to something that could measure the uh, benefits. So the right. realization of benefits. Right. right. And, and just, just to jump in for a moment. So, mm -hmm. and that is, that is one of the things that, you know, one of the things that is, that, that, that we teach is, is creating the business case at the beginning of a project mm -hmm. and so on. And we, um, we do have a, we, we, in a business case, we have the, um, you know, uh, projected costs of the project and so on. We compare that to the benefits that we're going to yeah. potentially re, uh, receive in the future, and that's the basis for the project being approved. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, so is that what you're focused on? Is that yes. hey, how do you measure whether we achieve that thing in the business case we talked about? Yes. Is that, yes. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the 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 challenge with managing realization of benefits when you are during the project during project delivery is that benefits happen later right. they happen after the project has delivered so how do you track how you're doing in terms right. of it, that's and, and sorry and that that's always been the part when it, whenever you know in, in the closing of a project Mm -hmm. you know, your final project report and you say, well, we had costs of this, we were over or under budget, we were ahead or behind mm -hmm. schedule. Yeah. But there's nothing about the benefit. It's yeah. like, gee, I hope, I hope we, we, we get yes. that back. It's yeah. like, and exactly. then I'm gone. I'm, the project's gone. And yes, good and luck, it, you know. And it goes to a completely different organizational unit. Right? So project delivery is on one side and now it that whatever was delivered goes to the business, to the operation. Right. So it's completely right. different people. And so, so you're trying to solve this issue. issue. Go ahead. So you're trying to solve this issue. Yeah, yeah. So that's wow. where RPI comes in. Right. Right. It's because it can be calculated throughout delivery. So because it's just RPI, all it is, the same as earned value, but uh, SPI and CPI from earned value, it's just comparing two numbers as mm -hmm. we did with the example of the building, right? So what we do in this case is the business case that you were, you know, bringing up and that's the source, that's the source, source of information has to include, or, or the, the key element there in terms of benefits is a stream of benefits year by year, usually. So, so in year one, we're not going to get anything because in year two, we we'll start ramping up. So we're going to get, let's say, uh, $500,000. In year three and on, we're going to get $200,000. And then it declines, or whatever, five years, seven year horizon. That's a forecast, correct? That's a forecast. And then, so that we can baseline. And that's, that's as simple as that. So. All you need to do to calculate RPI is to baseline the forecast. Right. So when the project gets approved, you baseline the forecast. Mm -hmm. So not only you're baselining your budget, you know, like the, your time frame, your, 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 you're also baselining your forecast of benefits. And then as a project evolves uh, or, or moves through delivery, you're going to have more information. So the ideal situation here is not only at the end, but every time, if let's say that there's a stage gate uh, system in place, every time the project goes into a gate you know, to review if they're gonna continue getting money or to request more money, which is usually the case, you know, you go there, you know, to, then, you know, that, that's where governance, you know, should say, okay, give me your revised forecast. Correct. So what is, yeah, based on what? Based on where your project is in terms of delivery. 
because if you said that you were going to take a year, but now you're what you're saying is that it's going to take a year and a half, that is going to push benefits at least half a year. Maybe nothing. Because if you were counting on being first to market, for example, right? And, and your project is starting to slide, you may get zero benefits. So, or very little, because you're gonna go at that tail end of a, you know, the market. So that's what needs to happen, right? So based on information in terms of where the project is, in terms of time, basically, that's what affects, you know, the, the benefit stream. And also, what do we know? What were about the environment, the industry, you know, the economy? What were the assumptions that were used to calculate this stream of benefits? Now, what are those assumptions valid today? So you can make some adjustments and say, okay, so we said $500,000 the first year, maybe that's not going to happen. It's going to be just 250. And then we said 100,000 100, from there on. Maybe there's going to be a, a contour where they'll start uh, building up, you know, 25,000 every year or something. Like that. Why? Because the economy, because uh, uh, interest rates or uh, exchange rates or whatever. You know? so, so you could, in theory, at any time, update your forecast of benefits. Of course, nobody's going to do it. So all the time. So it's not something that you're going to be reporting on your weekly sales report or even your monthly sales report. So this is something that should be tied to a gate. Right, right. Or Periodic. quarterly, the, if any, you would go up to quarterly. And if the project goes over, you know, it carries on, it carries over into the following year, but they, they should be there, right? So. Okay, so if you're going to continue, you know, the next calendar year, you know, there's a budget and you still need money, where are your benefits? So what is your forecast? So, so that gives you the, the information compared to the, the forecast, the, the baseline, sorry. And right. then all you have is two streams of numbers that you can use net present value to bring it to today, right? Then you compare the two net present values, and that's your RPI. Right. So it's as simple as that. Yeah. Oh, so your your RPI is is dividing. What's I'm just trying to get what the numerator is. The uh, is is it's the a, original. It's a current, it's a current forecast. Okay. Divided by the baseline. So right. if it is over one, it's good, right? So you are expecting higher numbers higher benefits than, than expected, than planned. And if it's less than one, uh, you are expecting you know, less benefits than you baseline. Mm. So very simple. It's just the two streams of, of benefits, right. MPV, and just a simple you know, division. So, right. so and the, the, the good thing formula, of that is that you yeah. don't need to be doing earned value to use this. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the, yeah. this is interesting. So the the concept is simple. I I I, I like I, I like it. This is it's it's easy to for you to explain, uh, not to develop, I'm sure, but to explain. And and I like the the easy division at the end of, of current baseline of uh, um, yeah current forecast divided current forecast. by baseline. yeah yes current forecast divided by the baseline forecast uh, baseline. Uh, the baseline. Yeah, baseline forecast. Yeah, ba baseline, baseline forecast. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Two questions I have is: is sure. that forecast? Who does that? And that doesn't sound simple to to like that. Like that. That sounds like you really need like a, a fairly sophisticated model. Would you not like to kind of model yeah. the assumptions, like you said, first to market. Um, competitors, uh, you know, what your sales forecasts are going to be, et cetera. So you, there's some stuff, this, this is not just grabbing numbers out of a hat, right? Like yeah. This is, there, there's some, there's some math behind this. Yes. And, and that, that math should come from the business case. Right. When you're creating a business case, you need to come up with that. What are the expected benefits? And that's where all the logic needs to come in. Right. So, uh, what I usually, you know, when I, I teach this is that you need to 
try to make your calculation as explicit as possible. Right. So it is very clear. This is what I'm using. This is why I'm multiplying this by this. And this is a parameter that I'm using. So right. then when things change, right. it's easy to adjust. Right. So, so let's got... say if I'm using inflation, you know, as part of the parameters, then I can just adjust it. And right. uh, so, so yeah, there is some math, but that should come from the business case. So if the business case doesn't have it, yeah, right. You can do yeah. it. Better. Yeah, you've got a you don't have a good business case if you yeah. if you just if you just guessed and said, well, I assume we're going to make you know ten million dollars in five years, and if somebody yeah. said, well, what what how do you know you're going to make, and if you can't answer that question, then it's a it's bad not, business right. case. You're right. Yeah, so, yeah. so let's make the assumption that we that as part of our business case, we have that model, that we've done our due diligence, that it takes into account, you know, all of those things, all of those different parameters. And like you say, it's explicit. We've said we're we're assuming two percent inflation. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we're we're assuming that the Canadian currency stays, you know, within X percent of of the American dollar or whatever the mm -hmm. whatever. so yeah. all of those assumptions are built in. And and this this uh, um, forecast goes over the the seven years or whatever, and then we mm -hmm. come up with our you know our total amount that we take back to present value, et cetera, et cetera. So that's that's good. So the you know like you're saying that work should already be done. Yeah. Like if if you're not, why isn't it? Yeah. So that's that's interesting. That's good. The, the second question I had then is, unlike with with um, earn value, um, CPI and SPI. It's all basically the project team is is control. Like it's it's mm -hmm. that there yeah. are external for forces, of course, in a in a project, but it's the project's performance that we're measuring, it's correct, more or less. It's delivered, yeah. The the delivery, um, yeah. and but in this case, if like our RPI, we could be doing really well, and then suddenly, like is actually happening right now. Um, uh, inflation is moving from you know 1.8 percent last mm -hmm. year or two years ago yeah. to 4.9 percent. If that has a negative effect on our on our forecast, suddenly we're not doing so good, and it has nothing to do with the project. Like, so, so how do you, yeah. how do you, how do you well, absolutely? I, I guess in some ways that's good. I suppose you might as well realize it now rather than. Yeah. down the road but it, that that must be sort of demotivating for the team of just saying hey we're doing great stuff but our rpi is decreasing well wow. but if that's a case that they the project should be canceled yes yes that is the yeah that, and that that's right one thing. of the things you know that portfolio management you know in most companies works like a horse race right every horse is allowed to get to the final line <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah. stop any of them. We don't. We yeah, don't. you don't kill them, right? You don't shoot <laughs> we don't them. Shoot them. them. <laughs> some projects should be shot, right? Right. We yeah. do need to take down some projects. Yeah, and that's a measure of the health of a portfolio. You right. Know, how many projects get canceled? Because think think this way. Mid year, you know, you start coming up with the idea of a project. Da 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 da. da. You present it. It goes through all the, and then it gets. Approved, but approved doesn't mean that it's going to start in January. So let's say you start sometime during the year, let's say June. Okay, so it will already have a year. Okay, since the original idea, the project keeps going. Maybe it gets to the end of the year. Now we have a year and a half. Maybe it gets delivered in the following year. It's too much time. Yeah. So what we thought that what's going to happen, the needs of the of the company, the the focus. Uh, what's happening in the market you know can change in, in a year and a half in two years that, so the the fact that most companies do not cancel projects it, it tells you something right? that the, but the problem with that is that there's always somebody behind the project right and that's where the politics come in so that p word <laughs> yeah the p word no. so Many times, you know, okay, nobody wants to tell anybody that the baby, you know, his baby is ugly or her baby is ugly, right? So, so there is somebody that put some kind of reputation behind the project, you know, the person that promoted it and sold it to the, so it is challenging but to, to, to cancel a project. 
Yes, but, if you look at it as purely on a purely analytical basis, you know, if we were all took our emotions and politics out of it, it would the answer would be clear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, either cancel so, that project, or you could almost say we should stop and retool it or something like that. Like maybe on its current course, it's yeah. heading for disaster. You yeah, know, it's, it's exactly. going to go over yeah. the cliff. But if we yeah. stopped and and reimagined it or you know re retooled it in some ways, perhaps we could you know, change yeah. the curve, you know. Exactly. So we could reduce, you know, grade, right? So still we're not going to get something that's going to work, you know, good quality, but the grade, you know, we bring it down. Right. So now maybe compared to the revised forecast of benefits still makes sense, right? Right. But, but so that's, those that's, things, yeah, can be done. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting though, because what you're saying is absolutely true is that somebody is behind this project. In most cases, somebody is the champion of it. They may yeah. have gone out on a limb to, to, to endorse it. And their, their reputation and perhaps career is riding on this project. Yeah. And are they going to be the ones that would say, sure, cancel this project that is my entire you know, career is hanging on. I'm yeah. in like that. There, there are forces at work. Oh, that, yeah. would, that would. Yes. So how do you yes. how do you mitigate that though? Like what? Well, that seems like a big one, one. One way is to have a stage gate system in place. Yeah. So it is known for the projects from the start that when they get approved, doesn't mean that they're going to have money to the end of the project. It only get money to get from one gate to the next gate. Okay. So, okay, so you need to do your requirements, design, let's say we're talking waterfall. Once you get to the end of design, that you need to go to a gate. And that's where you are going to present your revised estimates of delivery so, and your benefits. Mm -hmm. so, so everybody already knows from the start that that can happen, okay? So it's, so it's not a horse race. You know? right. Everybody knows that, yeah, I, I may get canceled if my numbers are not, the ones right. that the what what should be yeah. I think, you'd, I think you'd also need almost an annual refresher on the concept of sunk costs. Yes. Because most people don't really either they don't understand sunk costs or they don't mm -hmm. they don't like yeah. it because there there is this this yeah. motivation for for people that look if I've put five million dollars or two million dollars into this. I, I, I don't want to cancel it because but then I have to admit I wasted $2 million. I'd rather, in, a, in effect, what they're saying is I'd rather spend the other 20 yeah. <laughs> and never make it back and, and, and yes. lose money than to it admit is. losing to just that is correct. Yeah. $2 million. That is correct. So yeah, that's, it is, you it, almost it have is to sad, keep but, talking yeah. that language. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And uh, sometimes you have contractors involved. Yeah. So the contractors, of course, are going to push, right? Yeah. No, no, no. You, yeah. <laughs> no, we're we're good. We're going to, yeah. Of course, you know, right. they don't care. Right? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it is. There's a political thing there, right. but uh, so one thing that could be part of governance, you know, is that every quarter you have to submit a revised RPI, right? And if right. your RPI is below. Let's say seventy-five percent or point seventy-five, something like that. You need to go to gate, right? Right. So right. that could be a way. Of course, people could play with that. Of course, they they yeah. And they could uh, fix the numbers. But <laughs> yeah, for for any of these things, you know, to work, you know, there needs to be transparency, right? Right. So people are not hiding information or. Yeah, if everything's on the table. Yeah. And you'd also need a very strong governance on this. Like you say, this phase yes. case, it, you can't be that the, the projects themselves or the programs or projects are, are so powerful that no one can say no to them. There needs That's to correct. be this governance structure on top of it. That's that correct. Say, hey, look, yeah. you didn't, you're below 0.75. Sorry, you're out, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it, yeah. It has uh, to be in place. Or, Present the plan. You know, uh, were they going to? You're going to uh, rethink or re uh, resize or scale down your project yes. so you can still run your numbers and, and get a minimum return. Yeah. So that should be, and, and that's the whole thing, uh, Dave, of uh, looking at projects as investments, mm -hmm. yeah? so, because you're focusing on the return that they're going to give you, as opposed to focusing on delivery, which is what we have done 
all the time, right? But we've always focused on delivery and they pretty much ignore it, you know, the benefit uh, side. Right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 No, I was going to say that too, that in, in the, the, pro the projects that I've been involved in, once the business case is done, yeah. it's never spoken of again. Yes. Exactly. Literally, we have our eye. We've had our eye on the on the, the the deadline and the eye on the prize. We're gonna make it by this point. We're gonna get under that budget, and then we're and we're done. Like there's yeah. there's no there's there's I've never seen I've, in literally in all all the years I've been involved in projects, I've never really had the conversation of hmm. I wonder if we're still gonna. We're, we're, yeah. It's always like okay, we gotta hit that number, and if we yeah. go over. We'll have to increase the budget. You know, we'll have to we'll have to get the more budget, or, or we're yes. gonna be late by a few, you know, yeah, few units so, of time. So governance should be, you know, should require it. Of course, minor projects, you know, legislated projects, none of those, you know, require any of this, right? They don't require a business case, you know, to start. Right? Right. So um, projects where there is some uh, freedom to invest. Uh, those are the ones that uh, should have a business case, and a business case should be updated. You know, so at least every time they go to a gate, right. if this there is no gate, well, they, it should be. I don't know. Depends on the governance. You know, every six months, so at least once a year. So depending on the duration of the project, right? But uh, that that is part of what governance needs to do, and it needs to. Yeah, and it's not an easy one. It's not an easy one because you you depend. On people disclosing information, right, right. Uh, uh, so, have you seen this implemented? Is this yes. is this is this something yeah. that is in production right now, or is this more yes. theoretical? Yes, this has been implemented, in, and not not necessarily only the RPI. The RPI uh, is so simple, but uh, the, that uh, webinar, you know, that uh, that that is there in the in PMI. Has been watched by many, many people, like oops, over three thousand, I think it is now. Really? Yeah, so yeah, so yeah, I've got emails, you know, like uh, yeah, I'm using this, you know, like it's so simple, you know, that they don't need any help for that, right? which is probably not a good business for me. <laughs> <It's pretty laughs> I want to make yeah, it a little I, more complicated. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. So I said, wow, this is fantastic. You know, I implemented this, and uh, yeah. So the RPI. Now the governance part, yes. Yeah, the, many companies have the stage gate system in place, so it's probably the the, the most successful you know management uh, technique ever. You know, like uh, it's I think it's seventy five percent of companies in North America you know, have adopted stage gate a uh, stage gate system, and they keep it. So mm -hmm. it's not a fad that that you know a couple of years is gone and something else. No, they keep it. So and it's a Canadian actually. You know, I don't know if you if you know. Yeah, no, I yeah. did not know that. Good. Yes, yeah, it's a Canadian. Les Hill is in Burlington. You know, like a, yeah, who came up with this? You know, the, the stage case system. So uh, yeah, so uh, so yeah, the answer is yes. You know, companies are taking this seriously, and uh, and now. Well, 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 but the, the people like me that work on the area of benefits, we're expecting that this new pen box, you know, is going to have an effect also right. in that sense, because right. people are going to be trained on a different form, a different view, a view of value that if you're not generating value, you're doing nothing. So as opposed to just delivery. Right. And, and I, I, I think this would be a pretty, pretty easy sell or you know, it, it would be sellable to the senior management or CEO of the company, which is who you want to get, you know, for, yes. for something of this magnitude, you've got to have senior management support. But I, yes. I think if, if, you know, I can imagine the, the, the sort of the sales pitch where you, where you would basically saying, you know, this is about the forecasted benefit. This is about projects as investments, which would be speaking the language of the CEO. Yeah, you know, yeah, they yeah. would be all ears at that point saying, really, yeah. tell me more how this yeah. works. Like and the this. CFO. Yes, and the CFO, yeah. because they've probably been burned on projects in the past where they've they've dumped a big pile of money into something and yeah. it was just a big loss, you know. So, yeah. so I can see where if you can get to the right people, like you say, the CEO, the CFO, they would yeah. be saying, yes, I want to do this. You know, so yes. it's not, I guess it's not surprising this is in use. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if you... Do not have finance at the table. Right. It's not going to work. It's that simple, you know, because they control the purse, right? 
So they're the ones that, you know, release the money. And uh, yeah, and they're the ones that are interested. In this, yeah? So how do I know that I'm not giving money to the wrong, you know, I'm not betting, you know, the wrong, the wrong horse, right? Like I, I'm betting on, yeah. I always use the analogy of a, of a roulette, you know, like you're putting your chips, right? So where do I put my chips, right? And it needs to be based on risk and return, right? Like a roulette, right? So, uh, so yeah, so that's what finance should do. Okay, so assess. Okay, so what is this project promising in terms of return? But what is the risk, right? So what is the risk in terms of delivering in that, in that uh, under that budget and that time frame? And what is the risk of benefits? So yeah, some sometimes it's a slum dunk. You know, that you know that you're going to get those benefits because all you're doing is increasing, let's say, a new product line in a market that you already own and yeah, so you kind of know, but sometimes it's, yeah, yeah the, the risk can be huge. So, so, so that should be the basis of, uh, which is what finance, you know, should use anyway, in terms of uh, managing investment, right? Risk and return. So, so that is another component of the business case that uh, most of the time it's not there. Huh? Yeah. Because and you it's do- created on a, on a, on a, on a sunny day scenario. Yes. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. If yeah. everything, moon and stars line up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you did mention the the webinar link, and I will include that in the in the description of this uh, of 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 this uh, this video and podcast. That, that for anyone that wants to watch that, I've I've watched uh-huh. it. It's yeah. quite quite interesting. So I definitely recommend it. Um, you've also written a book as well, I, uh, Fernando. The, yes. the outcome driven organization is. Yes. Are these concepts contained in in there, or is this, or, yes. or does it go off in, in in other directions? No, they are included in the book. Yeah. Because uh, when you talk about outcome outcome driven, it, it is exactly this this topic. Right. The the, the whole idea is that you need to base uh, you need to uh, manage your benefits around business outcome. So business outcomes are usually measured by KPI. So it is your KPIs of the operation what you need to impact. Right. So if I'm if this project is going to help me, uh, let's say using a, a, an example is very easy to follow, right? Retail. So what are the KPIs in retail? You know, how many people walk into the store? You know, uh, how many items per visit? You know, they buy. You know, like all those, if I can impact those, you know, those are my outcomes. And then all my projects need to be tied to that. So how do they contribute, you know, to those outcomes? Because that's where sometimes uh, there's an added level of uh, not complexity, but uh, sometimes it's easy to calculate. Like an example of, uh, you know, a new line of products in a market that we already own. It's easy to calculate. So the, 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 the impact of the project is going to be measurable. It's easy to, but sometimes you are doing two, three, five projects that are going to combine to create a capability, you know, that is also going to combine with two or three or four capabilities, you know, that are going to impact that outcome. Think in terms of retail, right? All right. the things that you need to do, like online retail, right? To be able to bring people and, Artificial intelligence, you know, digitalization, all that comes into play. <clears throat> so there, you know, it becomes a little bit more complex because yeah. you need to be able to tie the contribution of each one of those projects to your outcomes. So that's how all this discussion, you know, goes like a little bit of a higher, uh, the next level right? of, uh, if you will, of uh, inclusiveness. So, yeah. One of the things that I've always struggled with is when we talk, and and this is, you know, I I just let me just lay it out for you and see mm-hmm. see how how it relates to RPI and and so on and and outcome driven is, you know, the 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 business case will say we're going to let's say increase revenue by you know three million dollars over four mm-hmm. years. That that's okay. We're going to do that, but. Or that's 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 the business case, and we implement the project. The project's done. We release our product into the into the into mm-hmm. the field into the market, um, and then the measurement of it is very difficult because 
there's all kinds of other projects that are that are working. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of other competitors that is it's almost immeasurable to yeah. be able to say, OK, well, at the the end of those four years, this happened. But how would you ever untie it back to the project's performance? Because it, there was there was, yeah. you know, you, you have this little stream coming into a giant raging ocean of of, of the environment. Yeah. So like is what we're talking about in our RPI, it's kind of it's more it's more theoretical, like it's more this is what we assume it's going to do. And that's what we're making our like we can't ever really know for sure, can we? Yes. There is it, it's just a forecast. Right? First of it's all, a forecast. Right? Yes. We have to we have to realize it's a forecast. Yeah. So then that scenario that you just described is exactly what the, the book talks about. Oh, it, because uh, in very simple terms, right? Uh, the example that we use in the book is we, because I wrote it with uh, Linda Schmidt, the co-author, co that we use is a coffee shop. A coffee shop that is selling traditional coffee and muffins or whatever, and now it gets, you know, it's, it's being cornered by Starbucks and so they need to compete. So to do what? To get more customers in, that's one indicator. Second one, okay, yeah. the second one is to spend more time at the shop and to spend more money at the shop. So, so now in order to do that, there is a number of projects that they need to do to be able to, and, and they get to, those projects help define the capabilities. And that's the key here. You know, a capability, a business capability is something that the, the operation is going to be able to do that cannot do today, or is going to be able to do it differently. And that is going to make the change in the KPI. Because if we don't do, if we do the same things that we're doing until, you know, until now, we cannot expect the change unless it's organic, right? But right. Uh, so that's, and that's where, that it's at that level that you should do your business case, really. Right. So do we really need this capability? So, okay, so then what are all the things that need to happen you know, in order to get this capability? And that it is there that you should, uh, that you should assess your business case. So then all the rest, you know, becomes, you know, it's like a, it's like a chain. Actually, the, the tool that we use is called results chain that links projects to capabilities to outcomes to financial resources. Right. So, and so you can create a network basically. So every project can contribute, you know, to more than one capability, every capability can contribute to many outcomes and that way and use them relative uh, estimating. So instead of trying to get into, this is going to be 20% or, or uh, you just use uh, the same thing that we use in our job. Right? So this is a contributor. This is a major contributor minor contributor, so it's just in relative terms. So that's enough to be able to assess, you know, what, how much money should we put into this project, you know, based on the contribution and, and, and the capability. So, right. so it, it, it becomes doable, but you're absolutely right. right. If you don't right. have that, you cannot do it. Yeah, it's, so, it's so I guess what I'm hearing from that is, is, is that, you know, don't try to do the, un, like you'll, you'll never untangle that future mm -hmm. uh, yeah. is that is to to find the indicators that you can then measure that will then yeah. contribute to the outcomes. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's interesting. Yeah. That sounds like uh, so, sounds like that's uh, you know like you said covered in the covered in your book and something yeah. that definitely to be read yeah. for sure. And I'll, yes. I'll include a link to 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 your your book on Amazon there as well. It sounds like yeah. a good read. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. And there's another webinar also on PMI.org about this whole topic, not just the RPI thing. The RPI is just that. It's very technical. Uh, there's another one called From uh, from Delivering Scope to Realizing uh, to realizing Outcome, something like that. So it's also under my name and Linda Schmidt. So uh, that right. one talks about that whole concept of uh, tying capabilities to outcomes and projects and how to do it. And talks about digitalization also, so how this uh, not affects, the, but the other way around, the, 
digitalization by definition uses multiple technologies. So right. the projects that they do is combine, combine different technologies to be able. So all those things, you know, to handle those in a traditional way is it, pretty much impossible. Right? Right. Okay, so now we're going to adopt, let's say, language recognition. And we're going to use that for a number of things, right? So how do we create a business case for that? Like, <laughs> you can. So just you can. So the only way is to tie it to capability. Because an interesting thing of this is projects do not generate benefits. And that's something that sounds like a shock, right? It is the operation that generates benefits. The operation is the one that makes the money. So what projects are going to do is pass a capability to the operation. So now you can sell this product, or you couldn't sell before. Now you can do this. Now you can offer this functionality for your customers. Now, and it is the operation that is going to do this, right? So what is the link between the two, the capability? You know, that's, that's what goes from the project domain to the operations domain. Well, that, that topic of, of capabilities is probably a, a, a topic for a whole other discussion. Right, so, but, uh, yeah, maybe absolutely. we'll have to have you back. But uh, anyways, yes. on that, uh, Fernando, this has been a fascinating discussion. Oh, thank um, you. The RPI is, uh, is, is something that uh, I think uh, many organizations should look at. And this is the, the, you've really done some good work here. So. You know, thanks thank for coming and, and sharing your ideas today. It's been thank it's you. been a fascinating yeah. discussion. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Anytime. Yeah. Okay. All right. Take care. Thanks for listening to my discussion with Fernando Santiago. Fernando's focus on quantifying the expected forecast of project benefits is very important. It is key that organizations understand this forecast, not just at the business case stage, but also throughout the lifespan of a project. While it's a difficult decision for any manager to make, cancelling a project that will no longer be of benefit to the organization is the right thing to do. If you'd like to learn more about Fernando's ideas, check out his book, The Outcome Driven Organization, available on Amazon. And if you like this series of discussions, please consider following Understanding Projects on your favorite podcast player or subscribing on YouTube.